Hello, everybody. I'm back again. So my name is Carly Richmond from Elastic, as you know. Um, I used to be a software engineer, and I'm sad to say some of the patterns that I saw that we shouldn't have been doing when I was an engineer, we're still doing, and it's leading to a lot of bad habits. So I'm going to talk about a few of them, including alerts. So how many people like alerts? Yeah, there's a reason no hands are up, because no one likes them. We send too much information, we bombard people with volume, doesn't matter if it's a legitimate symptom or not, we're just throwing stuff especially into email inboxes, which is where I used to find all my alerts. And I hope you're not doing this too. I found that quite often I couldn't find alerts. They weren't segregated by environment. They all went in my inbox. And in fact, too many of them went in my inbox because I came back from maternity leave and couldn't open it. <laughs> Doesn't matter that we've got observability platforms now. If you're raising, if you're not looking out for false positives, false negatives, if you're sending alerts or snoozing them, you shouldn't be. You should be looking at your volume and saying, maybe I don't need this anymore. Now, metrics. I get really angry about this with my former Scrum Master hat on. I've done a lot of different jobs. Because we seem to think that it's OK to use metrics to compare teams. And we actually end up in a situation where we're comparing apples and pears. McKinsey, I don't know, did anyone see this piece come out last year and get as angry as I did? You can't, I'm sorry, you can't use Space and Dora to compare teams. Please stop doing this. There were some great rebuttals on this. Kent Beck, in particular, said, when we start measuring stuff, we tend to find it makes our way into performance issues later. So if anyone's now tracking SLOs, I'm really worried this is the next thing we're going to start saying. So your contribution to SLO in the performance review is this. You can't compare the team A and B. So please just stop. Code reviews are still horrible and sucky. We still put forward comments that are not meaningful. We still ask questions that are not relevant. And I just find that even though we've got radical candor, we haven't realized that doesn't mean be a jerk. Now, I'm not the only person who's made this viewpoint. And yes, I have seen comments like, seriously, is this for real? Or a competent engineer wouldn't write this in code reviews. Would you, if you don't want to see that, don't write it. The next thing we're going to talk about is tests. Now, I hope I don't have to say that you have to write them. I thought that would be obvious. But if you keep those flaky, non-deterministic ones that are randomly failing on a Tuesday when it rains, I've got news for you. It's not useful for you. You can use an auto retry tool to find it and fix it. But if you can't fix it, for goodness sake, just delete the thing. I think we get so pent up about the fact that we're deleting a test because, oh, the coverage is going down. But if you have to run off and get a T every time, it's not worth it. Now, again, with my Scrum Master hat on, we suck at breaking down work. I respect what you call it, tickets, Jiras, Trellos, whatever you're talking about. The fact of the matter is we don't break down items well. And if we don't break down items well, that impedes our flow, especially if you took the prior advice I had, which is to bombard everybody with alerts. You need to make sure that not just that we've got work items and that people know what we're doing, we also need to make sure things don't get stuck. And we also need time to work on other stuff because things happen, we want to experiment. And one thing they do in the Elastic Engineering Times that I quite like is something called space time. We have a week every so often where we get to try new things and experiment as long as it aligns with the team. Now, the last point is very meta, because I'm, I'm talking about conferences while standing on a conference stage, and I'm fully aware of this fact. Sometimes we make it difficult, either from struggling to get sign-off for conference ticket costs, or we're bombarding people with all that work. But it's not just about hearing about the fab speakers all around here today that have been contributing. It's also about connecting with all you lovely people in the audience and finding out new techniques and skills that you can take back to your own teams. So, if you want to destroy a DevOps engineer, you can do all these practices that, despite the fact I've worked in tech for 13 years, we're still doing. Hoping you're realizing that bombarding people with alerts and having all these horrible anti-patterns are not good. We should be building people up instead. So let's look out for alert fatigue and try and find those false positives and negatives. Let's use SLOs and metrics to compare teams' performance over time and stop comparing teams. Make sure we've got a constructive code review culture that's empathetic and gives meaningful feedback on quality. Get rid of the flaky tests, please. Either fix it or delete it. Have space and time to try things out alongside work items and come to conferences, which you're already doing. So I did a ton of research. Scan the QR code if you want to see what I found. And with that, thank you very much, DevOps Days. Thank you very much, Carly. Well done. That was excellent.